Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Breakfast by Scott McClure. On June 11, 1776, the Continental Congress appointed the Committee of Five, which consisted of the following founding fathers, John Adams of Massachusetts, Benjamin Franklin of Pennsylvania, Thomas Jefferson of Virginia, and two other men who never made it onto any form of currency. Their task was to draft a declaration, but because the committee recorded no minutes, and at times refused to speak or even look at one another, little is known about what took place. What was recorded was a first-hand account by Button Gwinnett, a signer and statesman from Georgia, who was able to sneak into the committee's meetings by hiding under their table. Most of what he wrote has become myth, or considered to be just poor writing by many of today's historians. Button Gwinnett is known for being the second man to sign the Declaration, an accomplishment achieved by pointing behind the other founders and pretending to look alarmed, and then budging to the front of the line. He would have been the first if John Hancock hadn't grabbed the document and run outside with it, whereupon he climbed the nearest tree and signed his now famous signature just before the other men pulled him down and sadistically beat him. An interesting note to further study is that the first signer was technically William Whipple of New Hampshire, who unknowingly signed his name with disappearing ink and was the target of many other practical jokes by the founders. Another such case was telling only Whipple to dress in drag and hold a Philadelphia coffee party on the same night as the Boston Tea Party. Gilbert Stewart, the master portrait artist, attempted to paint this humorous event, but Whipple refused to hold still long enough due to someone having placed itching powder in his wig. It was also rumored that Whipple was present at the Boston Massacre, but was not recognized because of his mask. There is a controversial theory that this is yet another prank, since the Boston Massacre occurred on the same day as the annual Boston Masquerade. This friendly teasing went too far, however, when on the night of April 18th, 1775, Whipple refused to believe Paul Revere's message of, the British are coming. Assuming it was yet another practical joke, Whipple nearly died in his sleep. Ironically, he was able to escape from the British undetected by, again, dressing in drag. Shortly after the Committee of Five was formed, it was decided that John Adams would write the first draft, after skillfully winning four rounds of rock, paper, scissors. While the drafting of what would become the Declaration of Independence, the committee also took it upon themselves to decide what would be the national bird. Franklin, always the stickler for witticism, brought up the issue of which came first, the chicken or the egg. This led to Adams being unable to sleep for the next three nights, and when, after trying to get the other four members to join him in a game of tag, was quickly taken ill to bed. Upon reading his draft of the Declaration and noticing how many times the word egg appeared in the text, the other members grew concerned. The task was quickly handed over to Jefferson, who was then tricked into being locked into Franklin's study for the next 17 days until it was completed. To aid him, Jefferson was given all of Adam's notes, which again mostly consisted of more egg talk, as well as his mother's cherished recipe for chicken casserole. Years later, Adams would threaten Jefferson's life, when the dish suspiciously appeared on the menu at a restaurant owned by a relative of Jefferson. After long hours spent deciphering Adams' notes, Jefferson not only finished the Declaration of Independence, but also became a resolute deist. And so began the lengthy ratification process. While the Continental Congress continued to debate over independence from Great Britain, the Committee of Five decided to continue its discussion of the national bird. Jefferson, a staunch supporter of the bald eagle who owned many of them as pets, claimed it was the ideal choice for a newly formed country. Adams again became obsessed with the idea of the chicken for the national symbol, and began making countless sketches and wood carvings to show his resolve. This led to the renaming of their group as the Committee of Three. Franklin offered that an older, generously bosomed Frenchwoman would make for a splendid national symbol. Jefferson reminded Franklin that they must only include birds in this category, thus giving Franklin the choice to go back to sleep or back to France. Much to Adam's dismay, the chicken was at last ruled out, but only if Jefferson agreed to stand on his head for an hour and refer to Adams as Supreme Emperor for the rest of the committee hearings. Upon awakening, Franklin was furious that his brilliant idea for the wild turkey had not been considered, or for that matter, even mentioned yet. "'Tis a silly bird, vain and courageous," he argued, while Adams attempted to help Jefferson balance upside down. Jefferson argued again in favor of the bald eagle. The disagreement lasted for the next hour, and ended in Franklin falling back to sleep, Jefferson losing consciousness, and Adams returning to his wood carving. From his unbiased vantage point beneath the table, Button Gwinnett decided that he alone would solve the Committee of Three's problem. Gwinnett, a moderate in his political views, decided that the clearest answer would be to breed the two birds in order to create the American bald turkle that would not only be a nationally recognized bird, but also a delicious meal for Thanksgiving. A dream that would take the rest of his life for him to realize was impossible. <laughs>